Let's now head out to the Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama, where our friend Lori Meggs is standing by live. Lori, things look uh, slightly different out there in Marshall today. They sure do, Josh. The Payload Operations Integration Center recently underwent a little facelift, and now this room is equipped to do just about anything. Uh, joining me now, someone who knows a lot about that, is Rick Rodriguez. He is the Payload Operations Manager for Expedition 36 here. And Rick, first of all, before we start talking about the room, let's talk a little bit about the accomplishments of Expedition 36 so far. We're about a month in. Tell us what's been going on. Um, well, we've been very lucky. We have a, a crew up there that is extremely uh, hardworking. Uh, and really gun whole about everything. So we, they're just doing every bit of science we can throw at them. And we're throwing a lot of it at them. So it's, it's been a, a lot of science that we've accomplished in that one month. Let's talk a little bit about specific experiments. Okay. I know you've had a lot of fun with one, t surface telerobotics. Yeah, that one, um, it's an it's a experiment that we just started last week. And it's where the, uh, the astronaut on the station drives a rover that's on the uh, on a field at Ames Research Center in California. And so it's a remote control rover. Um, it's an experiment within an experiment, which is cool, because uh, Chris, the astronaut on station, never saw it before. He never got trained on it. And so it's the first time he learned on station. He, he did a little conversation with the scientists on the ground, and then he just went right to it, and, and he had a lot of fun driving that rover around. I bet every boy's dream. But, you Absolutely. know, that's where you guys come in, too. You actually go to Houston and train the astronauts on the procedures for experiments. That's part of the job in here, but right. this one was different. Yeah, well, we still developed all the procedures and helped the scientists and, and uh, put together all the, the documentation that the crew uses, but we didn't get to train the crew in this right. case. Right. He did it all himself on orbit. Let's talk a little bit about the racks and another experiment that yeah. used our microgravity science glove box. Let's talk right. About that. Uh, we just finished doing an experiment called BASS, uh, Burning and Suppression in Space. And uh, that experiment is fun because we get to burn things. <laughs> they're, they're little samples. They're made of wax and things like wax. And uh, we learn how the flames grow in space and how to put them out. So that's really important to figure out how do we do firefighting in space better than, you know, trying to learn how to do it better than we know now. Um, well, last Wednesday was a really special day yeah. for you guys here. You unveiled this beautiful new room. It's, Beautiful photograph on the back wall, nice backdrop for us, and, <laughs> right. and a lot of dignitaries on hand, some important ones uh, last week to unveil the new Payload Operations Integration Center. The ISS program manager was here, Marshall's center director and deputy director, and also the manager of the Mission Operations Laboratory was here, so it was a big event. But this room is not only beautiful, Rick, it's also functional. Tell us about how it is enhancing science. Okay, uh, the biggest thing you see when you walk into the room is the video wall. Um, it's 24 monitors all put together, so it's like one big monitor. And it's great because it gives us a way to communicate better. It gives us a way to see more information, and the whole team gets to see it. Um, so a couple of ex examples of what's on there that we use. One of them is uh, what we call a fault summary display. If something happens on station, we get a message. And that fault summary display will pop up. And it actually is very apparent when it pops up. It, it, it's very bright. And so it, it all lets the whole room know, hey, something's happening. We need to pay attention. Right. So that's one. The other example is what we call an AOS, LOS display. AOS is acquisitional signal. That's when we have communications with the station. LOS is when we lose it. So we need to know that because if we're working with the scientists and the crew members, then if they're coming up on an LOS period, it's really useful to know because we can plan ahead and, and tell the crew, hey, we're going to lose you for 15 minutes. We'll be back on the other side. Here's what we want you to do. So it's very useful to have it right in front of us. And cool countdown, the countdown clock. clocks. Right. Yeah. And you've changed the layout, too, of the room. You used to face the back wall. Now you face yeah. the video wall. And uh, that's improved communications for you guys, right? Yeah. And a couple of things. It puts us all closer to the video. Um, before, the people in the back of the room really couldn't see the front wall, which is where we had the video. And uh, so now we're all closer together. The other thing we did is we learned over the years that maybe one console operator needed to talk to another one, but they were all the way across the room. So we've learned which ones needed to be close together, and we moved the people around this time. So now they're all, it's better as far as which ones are closer to each other, and we can talk to each other easier. 
And one other thing I want to point out are those cool signs back yeah. there. I, I need one for my office. Yeah. Tell us, they're, they're functional too, and they're not only pretty. Right, they're pr obviously they, they have our names <laughs> on it, our position names, but more importantly, um, they change colors. We can actually change the colors on them. And we're starting to learn how to use that as a communication tool. So for instance, if we're doing a review of, of a timeline or the crew's plan for tomorrow, um, we may tell the team, okay, you start out blue, which is the, the normal color, and you may tell the team, go green when you're good with the timeline, or go yellow if you have a comment. So when the pod looks around the room, it's easy to say who's, who's good or who's not, and we can concentrate on the people that need attention. Well, we know how we feel about the room, but let's hear what International Space Station Program Manager Mike Sufferdini, what he thought about it. Oh, I love it. It's, uh, it's got a sense of, um, uh, it's got to feel like you have control of everything. There's lots of displays, lots of data. Um, we've added capability for more downlink, more comm channels, more video, uh, and you get the sense that it's all right here in front of you now. And uh, and that to me sort of rings of you know we're we're maximizing the use of the ISS, which of course is very important to us. That's right. How does this room play a role in the whole and fit into the whole space station program? So as, um, as most people know, all of the research management is done here, and m all of the USOS control of the facility is done here, and the management of all the US performed research is managed out of this facility. So um, with, the, with the conclusion of the last shuttle flight, we transitioned really at that point from assembly operations to payload operations. And, and so the focus kind of all switched to, to here in Huntsville. That's not to say there's not a lot of work going on in Houston to operate the systems and keep the systems going. Um, but their focus really is to operate the systems as efficient as possible to provide the most time and capability to the research community so that they can get as much done on ISS. And so really, this does represent where we are all starting to focus our attention on. And uh, so it's, it's neat. What's your vision for this room and the rest of the space station? Well, my vision is that we fully utilize the ISS, and we've got a ways to go to fully utilize it. And that means maximize, to the extent you can, all the resources. Today, uh, we pretty much maximize crew time, uh, but we still have got, that's not the only resource. A lot of research is done by commanding, by this very room, commanding of, of payloads on orbit. Um, and, and we still have a ways to go to really fill up all the rack capacity, the stowage capacity, things like that on board ISS. So my dream is to fully utilize ISS. And I really believe when we're done uh, uh, utilizing ISS to the maximum extent possible, great, great things will be discovered on orbit that will really be a big benefit to us here on Earth. So it's a, it's a, I'm imagining this is going to be a very popular place. And taking a live look inside this very popular place. Rick, we want to thank you. We know you've got a lot of work to do. We'll let you get back to all your Expedition 36 work. Congratulations on your new room. Thank you. And that'll do it for us from the Marshall Space Flight Center Payload Operations Integration Center. Now back to you, Josh, at Mission Control in Houston. All right, thank you, Lori. Of course, if you would like to learn more about all the various facilities that uh, help make up this uh, International Space Station team, including Mission Control Houston, just log on to the NASA website at www.nasa.gov slash station. You can take a tour uh, of our facility here in Houston, also the different international partner uh, facilities around the world, including Moscow and uh, in Japan and in Europe and Canada as well.